Welcome back to Craftsman's Corner from the NMLRA. Today we're going to be making this Hawk and Era hunting pouch from the Madison Grant Kentucky Rifle Hunting Pouch book. If you're interested at all in making leather bags, shooting bags, possibles bags that are in any way historically accurate, this is kind of the go-to book to get a hold of. I really recommend it. If you read the details of the book, some of the stuff in here has been recreated for the purposes of the book, but this is a good place to get started on your historic research journey for leather bags and accoutrements. For making this pouch, I'm using some of this veg tan hide here. It's a light brown, but we're gonna dye it a little darker. This leather is about an eighth of an inch thick, so that means it's about an eight ounce weight leather. This might be a little heavy depending on what you're going for for this bag, but it's gonna be a nice, thick, durable leather that's gonna hold up for a long time. So that's what I'm using. I recommend, you know, not going too much thicker than this, especially when you get to turning the bag inside out and stitching through the bag. I think anywhere from about a six to an eight ounce leather is gonna work just fine for something like this. According to Liberty Leather Goods here, each ounce of leather weight equals about 1 64th of an inch of thickness. So if you're looking at leather and there's not a weight listed with it, or you've got some in your shop like me that you've totally forgotten what it was, you can just take out a ruler or some calipers or some, some dividers, measure that, and go by increments of 60 fourths of an inch. So this was an eighth of an inch thick, and that gives me about eight ounces of leather weight. I'll link to this guide here in the description below so you can easily find how heavy your leather is for each of your projects. So to get started here, I have a few tools that I'm gonna be using. The first is a tape measure, some thread, stitching chisel, an awl, charcoal pencil, two needles, a set of dividers, some binder clips, a pair of heavy scissors, a flat chisel, a little bit of a beveled chisel, some leather dye, and a leather punch. So I've simplified the design a little bit. We won't be making a direct copy of this pouch, but to make this easier for all of us, uh, me as well here, I've made a pattern that you can download at nmlra.org slash craftsman's corner. It's the pattern that I'm working from for the video. And so everything that you do with this pouch from this pattern should be similar to what I'm doing here in the video. Here I'm just cutting all of the pieces out so we get everything ready and then I'm going to transfer the paper patterns to some old cereal box cardboard. This is going to give us a more sturdy pattern so that I can come back to this pattern over and over over the years and make a make more bags as I need to or as I want to. The paper itself is nice, but the cardboard is easier to trace onto leather and it's going to hold up a little bit longer over time. With that done, I can go ahead and get my leather out and start aligning the pattern with the leather. I'm going to be using my awl to trace the pattern onto the leather. I found that instead of using a pencil, the awl has a nice thin tip that etches a line from the pattern into the leather that makes for a really accurate transfer from pattern to leather. I've enjoyed using this a lot and I recommend you give it a try as well if you haven't already. When I'm cutting a pattern out of a larger piece of leather like this, I try to economize what I'm cutting out so that I don't have a lot of wasted space and a lot of wasted leather. Um, even some of the small pieces that you'll see in between each of the patterns, I'm gonna hold on to um, down the road. They can be useful for little accents, small pockets, or even welt pieces for small bags and things. So as long as the leather scrap isn't too small, you might hold on to it for a little while at least, and maybe you can use it down the road. To cut my pieces out of the leather, I'm gonna be using one of these Fiskars circle cutters. It's a really sharp blade that for leather, I found to be super useful, especially on long straight pieces. Um, it's a really fast way to cut the blanks that we have drawn onto the leather out of the leather. And combined with a ruler like that, you can see that things really just clean up real nice. Going along the curves of the pattern here, I'm using a really shallow chisel to cut a nice clean curve around the edges of this pouch. Uh, combined with really just a bench knife and our Fisker's circle cutter, I can get a nice clean cut that I don't have to clean up too much down the road. One thing the pattern that you can print off doesn't cover is the main welt for the bag. So what I'm doing is I'm tracing the pattern for the back part of the pouch onto another piece of leather and then I'm going to be using my dividers 
to span about three eighths of an inch to make my welt three eighths of an inch wide. And I'm tracing the divider along the inside of the line that we just scribed from the back part of the pouch. And that's going to give us that welt that's going to go around the pouch and give us some extra strength. I'm going to use that same 3 8 of an inch wide welt to cut one for the top flap as well. So we have a nice strong seam there on the high wear area of our top pouch flap. The long welt like we're using for the main body of the pouch can be a little tricky to cut out, but just be patient with it. If you don't have a curved chisel like this, just go along with a circle cutter like I'm using or a bench knife and just go slow and always keep even pressure on the leather and you'll come out fine. I'm using my favorite Feebing's mahogany die for this project. I've mixed it 50-50 with some rubbing alcohol to stretch the life of my die a little bit. The leather that I'm using is super thirsty on the fur side of the leather. So it's taken me, I think probably about three coats to really get a nice even die job on this. The smooth side of the leather doesn't take a whole lot once I get the mixture right and then I just have to be patient as all of the dye dries so it's not nearly as much of a mess while I'm handling it. So with all of our pieces now cut and dyed and dry it's safe to well it's kind of safe to handle them and so what we're going to do next is start thinking about assembly. Uh, so top flap and its welt we're just going to set to the side for a while and we're going to look at kind of the main pouch components here. So the first thing that we want to do is attach the inside pocket to the inside of our back flap and it's going to layer on like this. So we're going to cut the holes or um, punch the holes in here get this stitched up and then we'll move on to attaching the welt and talking about how we're going to assemble the front part of the pouch to the back part. So in previous videos we've used some glue to tack pieces onto other pieces to get them to hold. Um, lately I've had a lot of issues with that of that glue showing up and more traditionally glue wouldn't really be used in this so we're gonna try a method here of punching some what I would call guide holes with our awl and using just some single stitches knotted off to hold this to the back piece, hold the pocket to the back piece, so we can punch the rest of our holes for the pocket stitching. So what I'm gonna do is I've got this little short piece of just scrap wood here, and I'm just gonna set that here. I'm gonna punch a nice deep hole with my awl, and I'm gonna do another one. So before we move this, I'm gonna go ahead and loop a stitch through here and tie it off so we know that's not going anywhere. And then we'll move over, do the same thing to the other side on over here, and then we'll do one on the bottom just to make sure that we've got it really held down. This is a really simple technique. It's a lot cleaner than trying to use glue. I learned this from Jeff Luke. And then once you're ready to actually stitch this together, you can just cut those these placeholder stitches out here. So now this little pocket will be anchored to the back of the pouch. Now I'm going to get our dividers out again. And I just eyeballed these initial stitches, but I'm going to use the dividers to get that width so I can replicate that all the way around. Just to give us a nice even stitch line. Ooh, that doesn't quite line up, does it? Let's kind of bring that around and we'll just eyeball those last few stitches there to try to get that to line up better. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple more placeholder stitches here just because I know that once I start here and pull this stitch out, I'm not gonna have anything else but this stitch over here holding that down. So by putting one here, it kind of gives me another little bit to hold on to. So now we can go along this line all the way around with our awl or our stitching chisel and get these holes punched. I only have a four pronged stitching chisel here, so I'm gonna be compromising between four prongs and one prong with my awl as we go around. I can use the four prong pretty well, I think down to about this far and some here along the bottom. And then I'm just gonna be using the awl around these curves a little bit. 
you can get a hold of a three prong and a two prong and a, even a one prong slitting chisel out there and speed that up a little bit or something that I do if I'm making a bunch of something and doing a bunch of stitching holes is I'll take it over to the drill press with a really small bit and just drill through the leather on these lines. It's a fast way to get a nice even line through, especially if I'm working with thick leather. So here's a shot with all of our holes punched. You can see the back side here. This part will be kind of visible. This will be what faces you as you're carrying the bag. And this is what will be inside the pouch. So we're going to pop this one stitch here and start our saddle stitching process all the way around. These placeholder stitches for me are just one half of a square knot. So by sticking my awl in there and prying up a little bit, I'm able to undo that and then get my thread ready for stitching. Now I'm running the rule of four to five times the length of my stitching for the amount of thread that I have just so I don't run out. And then we're going to be saddle stitching all of the stitching for this bag. It can feel more time consuming, especially with a large stitch count per inch, but it's going to pay off with the longevity of this bag. So we've got our pocket all stitched on now. This is what the back looks like. It's a little kind of funky through here, but uh, from the inside it looks pretty good. <laughs> so now, as part of our next step, is we have to think about how this is going to be layered because we're going to sew it inside out. And this is always one of the harder things for me to do as kind of a dyslexic person is, is figure out how this layer structure needs to go so that we get everything on the right side. So I've got the front part of the pouch and I've got our welt here. The welt is going to go in the center like this and this part is going to go here. So I've already, as a kind of a test, I made a version of this bag and I'm looking at it now and trying to decode this a little bit. So I think that is the right way to do it. I've got it laid out there. So to show you the structure that I have here, I have the back of the pouch facing up towards me. And I'm gonna put down the welt. Our welt is gonna line up there. And then I'm putting down the inside face of the front um, pouch side. And so you'll notice that this welt sticks up above the pouch front a little bit. So we're going to lay our flap welt across here with our straps. Our straps will come in here as well. And then so we'll have a one seamless line of stitching connecting this welt to the flap welt to the top flap. So when we're sewing for this, we're only going to sew as far as this front flap goes here. We're not going to sew up here just yet. So with that laid out, I'm just kind of adjusting things here so that everything lines up as close as I can get it. The pattern should be pretty close. I think I'm just running into some overlap here where I had some extra leather, but that should be okay. So what we're going to do now is just like we did with the pocket is I'm going to punch a few holes here at the top on each side and down here in kind of these corners as well as down here on the bottom just to make sure that I have this fully captured before we start to mess with the rest of the stitching. And I'm just kind of lining up my awl in the center of the welt and pushing hard through each of the layers. And I'm keeping that kind of eighth of an inch to quarter of an inch off the outside edge. Because we've got this semi-captured here, I'm just going to go and punch all the holes that I have just so we get this buttoned down. And I saved my string from the pocket so we're just going to use the same little string pieces that we have here as our temporary stitches to go through and hold this guy down. This is a little more complicated than using glue like we have in the past but you don't risk any extra glue really kind of messing up your work. We'll get a nice even color on any final applications of dye and make this work. I totally spaced our friend the binder clip here. 
this will help a ton in getting these looking right. So I'm gonna add two more temporary stitches, one here and one here on the other side, just to make sure that we've got this welt more or less in place. Now before I punch the holes, I'm gonna apply two more binder clips, one here and you know on either side, just to make sure that we're holding that in place so we get a nice even hole all the way through. And really once you get this secured, pretty well good to go. It's just getting it secured is a kind of a pain in the butt when you've got all these different layers. When you're doing like a double, double bag too, all these layers really start to add up. I'm gonna take the dividers now and put a rough line around the outside so I have a place to go with my holes to keep everything kind of in line. And then we're gonna punch the holes and start stitching. I'm trying to score a line on the exterior of this leather is a little tough so I like to come in with a white charcoal pencil like this and just kind of mark that line just so it's a little easier to see when I'm punching holes. I've punched the first third or so of these holes and because I'm dealing with these three layers that you can see are kind of separating and, and moving around quite a bit I'm gonna go ahead and stitch all the way to here where I've got this first clamp. And that's gonna help stabilize this whole edge and make it easier to move down this way. So I'm gonna do this third, punch and sew this third, and then punch and sew this third as well. I find it helps to have four or five times the amount of thread as one loop like I have here around is. So I'm measuring around the pouch with one length, and I'm gonna then duplicate that four and a half or five times just to make sure I have enough. I'd rather have a little extra that I can throw back into the box for other things than not have enough and have to splice something in. And when I'm doing this, especially with a long run like this that I'm preparing for, and I've got these loose sections, I'll go through and stitch my first run in about three, I'll go three stitches with it. And I find that that gives me a nice place to start and keeps everything together. So I'm looping that through and then I'll get my second needle ready and do the other half of those stitches. Having a pair of pliers handy can help when you're going through these three layers of leather. Sometimes it gets a little hard on your fingers after pulling these through for a whole afternoon. And this is what the bag looks like with all of this stitching done. Now we're gonna flip this bag inside out and hide all of this stitching now. And this can be a little difficult because this bag isn't too deep. I found that it was pretty easy to get turned around. I've got that mallet handle on the bench that I found is really useful for sticking into the bag and really getting rid of those creases that you're going to find along the seam of that leather. It doesn't really want to turn inside out um, and you can get pretty far with your hands, but you'll find that getting a hammer handle or a mallet handle in there is really going to help you really finish out flipping that bag inside out. And there we have the main body of the bag done. It looks pretty good. I like how all the stitching is hidden and we've got a nice large pocket. Over here on the right hand side, I have a little bit of extra leather that I'm gonna probably trim out later down the road. Now it's time to think about completing the bag by adding some straps and our top flap. So I don't have any pre-cut strap material, so I'm gonna show you how I cut it out of the larger hide that I use. I measured around my body, around my shoulders, down to my hips, and it came out to about 47 inches. So I check the hide that I have to make sure that it's long enough to make the strap that I need. And then I cut a clean straight edge all the way down the length of the hide. And then I cut about an inch and a quarter width for the strap. So the strap is going to be an inch and a quarter wide and I cut that the whole length of the hide to make my strap. Then it comes down to fitting your strap, both sides of your strap, into the top of the pouch with your welt. I don't do any measuring here. I just set the strap end and the welt in the pouch and then cut off the extra of the welt until I get a nice fit all the way across. I look for this to be the welt and the straps to cover all the way across so I get a nice strong seam. 
I am going to be using a little bit of tight bond three here across the top of the bag because I have two strap ends and the welt keeping up with the temporary stitches just kind of became a real headache and sticking some glue down and letting the straps and the welt dry for a couple hours made an easy way to attach all of this and keep it even through the construction and stitching process. So I really recommend this as a, as a really kind of cheap and easy way to get this done and when you're handling multiple layers of leather like this it's really handy to do. To add some of the detail from the original pouch on the pouch flap, I'm using my dividers to scribe a line around the bottom and sides of the pouch. And then I widen the dividers a little bit to add a second line here for this nice double line motif that you can kind of see in the original pictures. With the glue dried on our straps and welt, it's time to start assembling the flap. Using my stitching chisel, I run a line of stitching holes along the top of the pouch, and then I set that on the top of the pouch so that I can continue each of these clean holes through the welt and straps and into the back side of the pouch. I'm going to be using our temporary stitches on each side and in the middle of this line of stitching to help it give us a hold here as I continue these holes through the rest of the pouch. It's really important at this stage, we're so close to the end, to make sure that you have your holes going in and through straight. The last thing you want to do is have a hole run out that you have to try to hide and hope that it didn't mar up the top of the bag too much. We're really close to the end so be careful as you're making these final holes to make sure that you're going through all the layers of the bag that you need to. Now it's time to pop the first temporary stitch and use our saddle stitch to go all the way across the last little bit of stitching that we should have for this bag. I like using a pair of fairly blunt needles, especially for a bag like this that I want to be pretty nice and clean. The dull needles make sure that you really stay in the holes that you've punched for your stitching. A sharp needle is, I think, more prone to want to run out because of that sharpness. It can cut through the leather. And I've had instances where you can miss your stitching holes with a sharper needle. So I like those dull needles. And then with this stitching done, I'm going to go ahead and hit the exposed stitching with a little bit of our mahogany leather dye. This is just going to match the color a little bit closer between the leather and the stitching. Here's a quick look at the finished bag, but we're not done yet. We've got to add a buckle to our strap and cut it to length. So I kind of mock put on the bag to get an idea of how long the longest part of the strap needs to be and to give me an idea of where the buckle needs to be. So I'll kind of fold over the shorter end of the strap and line it up with the longer strap and then mark those so that I can trim them and get them set up for the buckle and for the punched holes. For a clean cut on these straps, I'm just gonna use my flat chisel and then do that for the other strap as well. I'm using my curved chisel for that one. I'm using an inch and a quarter wide brass buckle that you can pick up from a lot of leather supply stores. I line this up with the largest hole on my leather punch hole deal here. And um, this is gonna be where the catch of the buckle goes through to hold the belt in. And then I'm using my stitching chisel to cut just four holes inside of the buckle there that I'm gonna stitch up with our saddle stitch to secure the buckle to the shorter strap that we have attached to the bag. And there's the finished buckle on the bag. I think the brass looks pretty sharp. I think an iron buckle might look even better, but for now this brass buckle is gonna get the job done. Now it's time to finish up the other side of the strap. I'm dying the end here where I've cut both of the straps just to get that cleaned up. And I'm punching an initial hole where I marked when I measured the strap on my body. That gives me a nice place to start. And then I'm gonna lay out with my ruler and mark a new hole every two inches. I find this gives you a nice range of motion to allow for growth in winter clothing or maybe extra holiday dinners. 
And there we have it, our finished Hawken era Madison Grant book inspired shooting pouch or possibles bag or just a, you know an everyday carry bag if you like. We've got a nice little pocket in there. We've got our larger front pocket to hold some screwdrivers, maybe some ramrod tips, some balls, some patches. You can see there with the original bag, we don't have a button and the shape is a little different. I think with another go at making the pattern, I can make something a little closer, but I'm happy with how this one came out. It's going to match really well with the tradition St. Louis Hawken that we built earlier this year and is going to pair nicely with a trip to the woods or to the range for some muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this latest edition in Craftsman's Corner from the NMLRA. Be sure to check out our other Craftsman's Corner videos on the channel if you'd like to learn more about making your own muzzleloading accoutrements. And if you'd like to support the channel, please consider checking out nmlra.org join. Becoming a member of the NMLRA costs as little as $3 a month, and you're going to receive our monthly Muzzle Blast magazine publication. In addition to knowing that you're supporting everything that we're doing here to preserve muzzleloading, living history, traditional crafts, and American history. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time.